No, no, let me just uh, okay. say to the people, uh, Angel del Valsa is a full professor at the University of Cadiz in Spain and has devoted the uh, last part of his activity in research and teaching on coastal areas, I think you can, can say, yep. and especially on the chemistry of seawaters. Is that what? Okay. More or less. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Luigi. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, as all the time. Thank you. Um, uh, excuse me, because I can't speak Italian. Uh, so I will, I will speak in English. So, well, thank you very much, Luigi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, all the, all the organizers, because this invitation, I really like to come every, every year to Ravenna. Um, became more or less a Raveniense, and uh, thank you, thank you for for all this attention you are uh, giving us every year. Thank you. Grazie mille. So uh, what I'm going to talk today is just uh, an old an old talk, an old lecture I have I have used in the last three years about a mitigation option for the increase of CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, what? Anulo. Anula. Mucho cuidado. This is a, a quite, quite um, classical talk I have, I have done in the last year and also I did three years ago here in Ravenna. I have updated because in those times, three years ago, it was like something we were thinking, people were thinking to, to use, to mitigate, to decrease the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. So uh, I will talk a bit about carbon capture and estuarine in marine environment and focus on risk characterization. Uh, all of you, I'm not going to bore you about the increase of CO2, global change, blah, blah, because all of you are already advised about that. Uh, but yes, some data, uh, even the 380 is, is, has been increased in the last, in the last uh, decade, in the last year. Uh, this is an unprecedented concentration in the recent planet history. Well, uh, not planet history, but human history, because before the human, we got even mm, higher concentration of CO2. Remember that our planet was CO2 instead of oxygen before. But in any case, after the Stern report, uh, after the economists point out the problem with the global chain, because the scientists, we did long time ago. Arrhenius, in, when he received the Nobel Prize, he just advised about this experiment we are doing with the planet because we are putting the carbon, which takes centuries to be um, coal or petroleum, something like that, we put it in, in, in hours or in days. So we have an unbalanced kinetic uh, equilibrium, and it, but no one take care of that until uh, one economist say, okay, if we, we, if we don't make anything, we will get uh, lose a lot of money. So that's because the people start to think about the problem of the global chain. Uh, what is carbon capture and storage? Well, I mean, uh, is, this is the problem. I mean, some t someone think, under a chemist's point of view, that we have an unbalanced kinetic equilibrium. So we are putting the carbon, which takes centuries to be filled in uh, hours or in days in the cycle of the carbon. So someone say, okay, if we have this problem with the uh, time scale, let's take the CO2 and put quickly back to the holes and to the reservoir in which this petroleum and fuel was previously. So someone has this uh, monster approach in which the idea is to, in the first approach, capture, take that CO2, then transport, and then storage. Um, I'm not going to explain all the process of the capture, but have an, an, an interesting thing, which you need to, you, the, the CO2 is a gas, and you need to transfer it to the liquid. Uh, this is a super critical uh, process in which you produce a chain from CO2 gas to supercritical liquid CO2. Then you can transport and, and play with it because it's dense, it dense, it's more dense than the water, etc., etc. Uh, so once you once you capture, you can store that in different previous geological stable formation. A geological stable formation should be something that is stable for centuries, otherwise it's not going to be stable anymore. And then it's supposed to be a permanent storage. I'm describing quite quickly the hypothesis of this uh, uh, geological approach to mitigate the CO2, then you can use the plate oil and gas reservoir, the deep cell information, amenable coal beds, etc., etc. You take, you need to take into account that should be permanent and should be stable. Basically, this is some a schema of how do you uh, can capture and then you storage in this kind of, of 
things or even in the marine. I put it this in marine because it's what I'm going to focus in the next in the next minute about the talk. Uh, this is curious because uh, usually when you propose this new technology, you need to first to do some uh, laboratory scale uh, experiment, then some plant pilot, pilot plant experiment, and then you go to the field. However, uh, because it's a very interesting hand industry, uh, they pro they can do the first experiment in the in the nineties in Norway. I mean, I think Norway, N Norwegian. Sorry, my English to say the Norway people is very difficult. Norwegian, <laughs> Norwegian were one of the former uh, in initiative for this kind of, me of technology. Uh, they don't, they not, not in the region, but not even in the, in the planet, we didn't make any uh, laboratory or pile, pile of plant experiment previous this, this thing, so it's quite dangerous, quite tricky at least. So the idea, they, they, they collect the CO2, they transport the CO2 and they put in this kind of slime in Norway, it was in, in the 90s. Uh, I will see how they monitoring how they, they, they were doing, they were pumping and injecting uh, an storage in CO2. Um, at the left, you have uh, simulated CO2 bubbles based on the model, and on the right, you have measured and real measured of CO2. Uh, one one you have injected. It looks like it works, so more or less you are expecting the same the same amount of CO2 in the same layers and same area. The problem, one of the mentions I like to see with this technology is the detection limit. The detection limit in the in the measurement is 1,000 tons, so you don't know if you have more or less 1,000 tons. So, well, I mean, you are talking about m m millions or hundreds of thousand tons, but 1,000 tons is, you know, kind of tricky thing for the detective. Uh, what this technology, uh, what is the large, what is the capacity in the wall to, I mean, how many, how many grams or gigatons of CO2 can we estimate with this technology? So how, man, how much are our efficiency to take in the CO2 from the atmosphere to put it in the geological approach. What well, is estimation? It's estimation because you all, every day you, you, know, you know in the newspaper and the, in the TV that new oil, petroleum, new coal, meaning so it's increased. But it is estimated that the global capi capacity in the world should be like 20, g this is 20, sorry. This is not to see, is it 20, 20 gigatons of CO2 to 2,000 gigatons of CO2. And the key question of this technology is, I mean, because we are doing something which is not really, really a natural process, because uh, we are putting the CO2, the carbon that was petroleum or coal or whatever, we are putting it back to the same place, but not in the form of a stable fuel and a stable uh, product like petroleum and things like that. So we are doing it to, to changing it to a supercritical fluid that is supposed to be in the same characteristics like the petroleum and an oil. So we don't know if these stable formations that were stable for petroleum will be or not for this CO2. So the key question is uh, how much time will be permanent in this uh, storage and how much can we accept for a leak? Because it's not going to be a completed seal hole for the CO2. So this is uh, more or less the, the questions and uh, there, there have been a lot of discussion from the last years about the time and, the, and the, the leak. So I like here because the British used a, a specific, uh, very precise definition with very likely hi higher than 90%, 99% over 100 years. Likely, uh, sometimes for no English speaker, it's quite complicated to, to know the difference between very likely and likely. But anyway, it's something like to be stable in thousands of years, otherwise will be will be a problem. And the leak rate is 0.1% per annum for a preference storage. And the question for a scientific, for a scientist is always why 1.0% and no 1.9 or, you know. Uh, after, uh, in the London Convention, when we proposed, when someone, when someone from Australia and from Norway proposed this kind of technology, only two countries in the 80, 88, 85 uh, parties of the London Convention were not against this technology, but yes, we advise that this technology should have previous uh, experience in the laboratory on the plant, pilot plant. One of the country was Germany, and the other was Spain. And the Germans uh, only proposed just to study a bit more before to start with this technology, and also to change the 0.1% to 0.1%.
and they use at least they use a, a justification uh, for this and evidence for this for this kind uh, of of approach why point one on and the german one point zero one so they base it their proposal because they they estimate uh, that should be ten percent of the natural benthic co2 emission rate the natural emission co2 rate when you uh, make the i mean when the diagenesis of the organic matter in sediments or in the when the natural process is estimated to be ten percent of, of this amount and it's more or less a global average more or less of 150 tons of co2 per square kilometer per year so all this at least the chairman put some scientific idea in the in the in the data so um, but before the impact uh, i would like just to mention because i go so far at the beginning uh, why do you think that this uh, technology could be uh, interesting i mean because when these guys because these guys that proposed the technology were pe petrologists. I mean, geochemists, petrologists, and engineers working in mining activity. And uh, it was nice because in the, in the meeting in the London Convention, there is also Greenpeace, or OCDE, and people in the environmentalists. And they were very, very easily convincing that this technology is working. So it's like uh, you are winning a lot of things. I mean, you have a technology that you take the CO2, which is a problem, it's a global chain, it changes, you know, things like price levels, things like that. You are putting the CO2 back. So it's like your trust. Someone will take care of your trust. So everyone was, was happy, and uh, especially the environmentalists. I was, I was surprised because it's not a quite clean technology. Then you are winning money. How do you win money with this technology? I mean, who is, who is really winning, winning money with this technology? Well, basically, the petroleum companies, because it's like uh, you have uh, this petroleum, this uh, platform in the, in, the, in the marine environment. Usually with the high technology, you will explode 80, 85% of the total amount of petroleum. You will drop 15% or 20% because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like what you, the, what, the, the wine and you have this uh, in, at, the, at the last. But with this technology, you will, uh, you will inject and pump a new high density fluid, which is a CO2. It's, even more dense than the petroleum. So it's like you are doing a pneumatic fluid that will take this 50% that you cannot explode. So, great. But, but even more, because uh, you know the electric plant, the coal plant, uh, all these guys are paying a lot of money because Kyoto, I mean the emission, the extra emission. So, great, I will take your uh, trash and I will keep it, I will use it, but you don't know. Well, now everyone knows, no, but at the beginning they don't know. And I will get extra money because, I mean, I'm recycling your, your trust. So they win three things. Two point of money because they got uh, taxes from the plant and coal mining and coal plants. They use it to get more extra petroleum. And then an environmental important high, well, definition of we are the savers of you. Don't worry. We'll take the CO2. Everyone will be, will be calm. However, this technology has some problems. I mean, the problem that has been not addressed till now. I mean, is uh, CO2 is always with the petroleum. And the petrologists, the, the, the engineering, they know that when they, you know, inject, they will pinch, link the, the petroleum bar, sometimes the CO2 is the first thing. And it's really a strong, the pressure that the petroleum can produce in this kind of, if uh, probably you have never, never been in, una plat in one platform when you inject the first thing, the platform already is like uh, seismic it's because the pressure of the CO2. So it's, you know, it's not you know, this kind of nice, cute gas working around. And this is not a gas. Please think that CO2 in this technology became super critical fluid. In any case, theoretically, if you have problem in, um, with the seal and you have leaks, both when you are injecting or when you make the storage, you will have three main main uh, uh, problem, which is the alteration of physicochemical equilibrium. If you alter the physicochemical equilibrium, you will alter everything. Uh, every equilibrium, the chemical equilibrium will be altered. Metals, organic will be, the dark trapped will be moved, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You will alter alterate the geological formation at the first stage because you are pressuring. You need a lot of pressure to inject a supercritical fluid. It's dense, and you need to have. And sometimes you produce little, little, little seismic. There is a 
it is a hypothesis. I don't like to, to tell that because it's not demonstrated. And, but do you remember this uh, volcano when, when Isla, in, in Island? I remember because I was in Brazil and I was to stop it there for two or three days. And I was, uh, after that, I was checking with Diana. Some of you don't know Diana Fernandez. She was working with, in, she was a Fulbright working in, in Rhode Island with people doing some experiment with CO2 and they were involved in some injection in Island, quite close to the, to the volcano and curiously, coincident in time. When they start to inject, the volcano start to, some, but it's not demonstrated. It's not demonstrated. <laughs> it's just coincidence. <laughs> I don't want to be this kind of scientist, you know, crazy scientist uh, blaming everyone, but you know, it's coincident. And then you have ecological alteration. I mean, if you have leaks of CO2, you will have acidification, and you know, every species will, I mean, every macrofauna in the benthic will be changing because some of them can accept the acidification and others cannot, and will produce effect in and all, all the levels, I mean, larvae, and familias, taxa, etc., etc. Uh, when or what would it leak in short term during the main during the operation when you are injecting, and in the long term when you seal, but you it's not. I mean, it's not like a cocktail you can seal. It's just natural. You know, you have falls something like that, and the bubbles can you know. Hopefully, will be bubble because otherwise. Uh, let me show you a natural problem, uh, a real thing that happened in the 1995, I think, in La Lake, Lake Neos in Cameroon. It was, uh, this is a lake, quite deep lake, and have a fall, a seismic fall, in which you have natural CO2, producing natural CO2, and no problem. But uh, um, no problem because the lake, you, the, stratific, the layers of the stratific of the lake, of the lake change every day with the seasons. The dynamic, the mixture, and everything is perfect. However, for some reason, during three days, three years, continuous three, three years, they did a mixture in the lake, so the CO2 was accumulated in the deep, in the deep um, uh, layers of the water. And then, at the fourth year, the move was rapid, quick. So it produced uh, the, the CO2 that was in the, in the deep formation, which was more or, lo more or less liquid or gas, but was stable. It became at the atmosphere very su very quick, and then it kill it kill everyone that needs oxygen in 20 kilometers around, including humans. Uh, it was in Cameroon. It's not a high populated area, but 20 kilometers around. Imagine in New York or in San Francisco or in Cadiz, we will <laughs> we will get everyone died. Eh? Uh, so and it, it, it affected one three. I mean it produced some died like 3,000 and a half, and more than 4,000 inhabitants were affected. It was just, it was just a, in a, in a, a leak of 1.6 million tons, natural CO2. It's not, um, we expect to, to have more than millions in this kind of holes. Uh, I mean, I don't want to have this crazy scientist, oh, watch out, I mean, but we should take care of this kind of things. I mean, in, in the natural, in the, na in the nature, we have this problem. So. This technology has some risk. And the only thing is we need to know. We need to know which kind of risk to prevent, to, you know, to make things. Also, you will have diffuse and continuous leak. I mean, in this kind of falls, uh, fractures, or wells, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what, how, I mean, just notes about the ocean acidification, how the ocean works with the CO2 is, uh, has been in the last year, a lot of people working in that. This is a more or less the global carbon cycle, uh, under my point of view, we still don't know anything about the global carbon cycle. We have real high uncertainties based in the terrestrial ecosystem uh, because the forest and things like that. So we talk about one, one gigaton, more or less one gigaton, so we don't know anything, but we have some approach. The, taking into account how the, how the ocean is, the ocean contains more than 3,000 3, gigaton of, CO, of carbon. We represent more than 90% of the carbon in the world, non-geological carbon of the world. So the estimation is, the general estimation is that the ocean is, is working like a sink and with a flow about two to three gigatons per year. So the ocean accepts the whole ocean. I mean, in the coastal areas, not working in this way because it's more, not a sink, but a source of CO2. But in the, in the middle of the ocean, they, they act in like a sink and in the balance is more or less a sink. So some of you can think, Wow, this is our solution. 
Now, the problem again is not a matter of thermodynamic. We are talking here about thermodynamic. The problem is a problem of kinetic. A molecule of CO2 in the surface of the ocean will take centuries to reach the, the deep water and the sediment. And so it's not working if we don't. But anyway, the, we have some reserve of CO2. Of CO2 and basically, it's because we have this kind of bicarbonate equilibrium. This is what we have. When you have an extra gin and tonic in the night, you need this kind of thing for your stomach. Which is the same for the, for the ocean. But the, the ocean have the bicarbonate natural. So that's because the pH is the same, and you have problem with acidification. You don't have problem with acidification. So any extra CO2 will be taken by the bicarbonate, and it will be uh, equilibrated <coughs> in this buffer solution with CO2. Um, with this biocarbonate equilibrium. Uh, the effect of, uh, of acidification is uh, everyone could just uh, go, go fast, it's acidosis, hypercamia, asphyxiation, et cetera, et cetera. If you have an extra of CO2 in the ocean, it will be more or less than in the terrestrial, maybe a lower, but in the, the, same, the same case because the, the animals, the, the fauna, et cetera, will be chained because this CO2. Uh, Yes, well, I'm not going to go to physical chemistry now. I mean, it's just to mention, uh, because it's important, the, the critical point of CO2 in the, in the ocean. Uh, I will explain later why. But the critical point in the ocean, I mean, in which uh, this is stable uh, in between supercritical, when it became supercritical CO2, is around, around 750 meters around, depending on the density of the body water, but it's something like between 700 and 800 meters, you will have CO2 like a supercritical or a liquid. I mean, if you, if you put a, a, a bubble of CO2 very fast to eight, 800 meters, you will have not a bubble, but a, a drop of CO2. What I, what I wanted to, to explain with this pressure and temperature diagram, I'm not going to go for chemist now. But this, why it is important, this eight critical point? Because depending on, on the area you are injecting, if you have leaks, you will have bubble of, of water, you will have, sorry, bubble of, of gas, of CO2, you will have liquid, or you will have high density liquid. And this is important because the reactant of this CO2. For instance, the Dutch, the Dutch, they want, they want to inject, uh, I don't remember exactly, but it's like uh, 100, 100 kilometers or 50 kilometers in front of Rotterdam port. The sediment of the Rotterdam port are really <laughs> interesting for uh, a contaminant and environment, environmental science. I mean, it's really a laboratory of plenty of different contaminants. So uh, you, you will have the whole mm, thousand or hundred of meters um, below the, 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 um, the crust, I mean, the, the land. But above this land, you will have over, overlying water. Depending on the column of overlying water, you will have different CO2. For instance, in Rotterdam, this 100 kilometers, the depth is like 50 to 60 meters. So we will be, in the case number one, a depth lower than 800 meters. At this depth, if we have a leak, it will be bubbling CO2, mm. like uh, blah, blah, blah. And then it was, uh, CO2 is a gas, uh, so it will be bubbles, and it's very quick to dissolve in water, and uh, the surrounding water. The retention time of the gas at this depth is very little. It's just the, the, gas, the gas will be just mm, dissolved. And depending on the quantity or the rate of the bubbling, you will have a very fast impact. I mean, if you have a very fast uh, rate of uh, bubbling, you will kill every, every animal around. If it is slow, you will be killing step by step. And if it is slow, you will change every equilibrium. All these metals, just talk about metal. All these metals that are trapped in the minerals, even, or the organic matter in the sediment, will be liberated to the overlying water and then produce whatever they produce. So first effect will, will be CO2 itself, the acidification that will kill any animal that don't accept this change in the pH, is changed in the acidification. And then those survival animals will need to deal with this strong environment charge of metals, organic, that were liberated from the from the sediment to the, to the water. Oh, <laughs> okay, I need to stop. <laughs> At depth higher than 800, you will not have gas, but liquid. And this process will be slow. And uh, at, at, at depth higher than 3,000, for instance, Australia is, is pumping uh, at depth higher than 3,000, you will have 
a dense liquid with is not reactant. It's mm, forming clartrates, and they are not reactant. But the problem is, we of oceanographer, please, Alice, correct me. We really don't know very well about the the dynamic of the ocean. So this uh, surface of CO2 at 3,000 meters in Australia will move, and maybe they will cut this kind of high-level quick current and appear maybe in Los Angeles. <laughs> so, uh, and, and they will appear in this way and they will produce CO2 gas, no. So it's quite tricky, I'm just put this kind of dramatic scenario. Um, this is uh, what should be the, the, stable, uh, um, the stable structure. I mean, as, as if it is mineral trapping, it will be more stable than if it is just a structural extracting trapping in the, in the hole. This, uh, what they, uh, if you remember my talk three years ago, we, have, we got only uh, two or three uh, points. Now you can see that it's plenty of points, either in the marine environment and in the terrestrial environment, and that will be increasing in the, in the, last, in the next years because it's in making money technology. And uh, well, there's something that do in 2000, and, and it's Novit, for instance, et cetera, et cetera. North Sea will be one of the key points. What are doing people in the world? But we all have all this kind of protection environment, in marine environment, London Convention, Oscar Convention, Barcelona Convention, et cetera, et cetera. And we produce these environmental risk assessment guidelines. Sorry, I need to go fast, otherwise I will not finish. And uh, which are based in six step problem formulation, size selection, exposure assessment, effect assessment, risk characterization, and risk management. It's something like that. I mean, sorry, because they, I need to go faster. Uh, what I can show very fast is what we, we have done in the last year about exposure and effect assessment with this approach, with the weight of evidence approach, using four lines of evidence, determination, uh, effects on the laboratory condition, effect on the field condition, and by accumulation, we put all with different pH X scenario and we simulate the effect. We, uh, for instance, see how the mobility of metal, some, some colleagues, they say by availability. I prefer to say more chemist mobility because we don't demonstrate any biological effect. We demonstrate just higher or lower mobility of metals in the sediments. Also, we have checked uh, different biases under laboratory condition, changing the CO2. Uh, I mean, simulating bubble of CO2 on the laboratory condition, cha changing the pH, the pH and checking the effects. This is our little little monster. We it's quite. You have different aquarium and you inject, simulating different pH values depending on the rate of CO2. We don't use acid. We just bubble CO2 and we control the pH under under this. This is a cadiz. This is a cadiz. Actually, this wall is breaking. Eh? Yeah, this is Cadiz, and this is what we designed. We have a couple of these little monsters to simulate thin. We have another monster now, to more bigger, we simulate CO2 bubbling for macro community. We put macro community from the, from the field on the laboratory and check how, you know, the structure is moving and how, which kind of species disappear and which kind of feature or uh, species appear, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Not appear, but grow, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And biosays, typical biosays, like barring and things like that, sea archin, I mean, classical one. We have demonstrated that one unit chain of pH produced mortality for the same contamination. I mean, for instance, sediments from Huelva, Ria, from Huelva River with uh, contamination, mo moderate contamination, are not toxic at, uh, for instance, uh, 7 of pH in sediment. But if you decrease the pH to 6, all of these people, all of these guys will, will be killed. So, and also they chain biomarkers and everything. Uh, also, it has been uh, collaborated with people in Plymouth and in Norway that they are doing the same. Uh, actually, there are not too many laboratories in Europe working in this, only a couple of them in, in the state. I, I have been uh, doing talks around the world with this thing and uh, asking people to start with this because it's a, a new, interesting area to, because we need to know which kind of animal accept that, which kind of condition could be. And for some reason, people are so busy. Now maybe now it's very complicated, very complicated to do that, in, um, at least in the south of Europe. I mean, they cut everything. I need to cut my hair too. <laughs> and uh, well, we did, we have to reproduce a field condition. We have a field laboratory. We have the Rio Tinto and Rio Diel in Spain, which is a natural titration of acid from a pH of two to a pH of eight of the river from the 
from the you know, from the head of the river to the mouth of the river, we change the. I mean, it's natural, natural meaning acid water. So we have a natural uh, environment in which you have different acidification. Um, we we can we can see quite easy which how the number of species, the number of individual or or even the evenness, but species and individual chain when you change the pH. This is higher pH, this is lower pH. So once you decrease the pH by bubbling CO2, you decrease the number of species and the number of individual. Uh, it's done by sun and by mood, and basically it's the same different slope, but same trend. The same for fluxes of not nutrients, and but for by accumulation, we demonstrate that one unit of pH increase blood values of zinc, for instance, that are significant accumulated in the in the in the texture tissue of, of clams and that could be even worse. I mean toxicity is is dangerous but by a magnification is even worse because it's slow and smooth and will kill human. So but anyway we still ask I'm um, I'm finish always my talk in, in in asking for people to do an experiment like this because we need uh, more 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 information. Uh, now we have collaboration in Norway with uh, this this they call the T-tank. It's a tank of titanium to to do the same thing but under pressure. Like uh, not only in the because this experiment is supposed to have more or less pressure of atmospheric pressure, maybe it's working till 100 meters. But higher than that, you need to take into account the pressure. So we will try to do that with the T-tank. We'll see. And we will start with bacteria, which is the easy one. So thank you very much. Sorry for, for taking more time than necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. It's very interesting. And uh, what I am thinking about <laughs> what you were describing, that to get rid of uh, CO2 is not an easy problem. No. Not at all. But I want to ask a question to you. Because uh, uh, when you are trying to put CO2 inside, you have the starting point. The starting point are different ways to produce CO2. You produce, uh, for example, CO2 in transportation, <coughs> in a uh, home, a uh, heating system, and so on. So it seems to me, uh, and it is written in, t in literature, that the, the total amount of CO2 is what is coming from power stations, burning fuels, because you have a, a stream made of CO2, nitrogen, and uh, oxygen, and water also. Uh, yes. Seen metals, organic. yes, but these are trace element, trace uh, substances. So uh, the the top of the amount you can catch and then you can capture is that one produced by power stations. Mm -hmm. But I mean, basically, from power station is easy because you have a stream. Yes, but the process is complicated. I mean, I didn't talk about the process. The, the more critical process is purification. Mm -hmm. You need to purify all this stream, and it's the cost. The cost. Because in reality, when you are saying that you are injecting CO2, and that was a very hard discussion in London Convention, uh, you are not injecting only CO2, because the purification of the stream is not 100%. It's like uh, it was accepted, because it was a pressure from the industry to accept 95% accept, um, of CO2 of like pure CO2, which is not. But this 5% is... In any case, if you take and capture only the CO2 produced by power station, this means uh, uh, refer to the total amount of CO2, 30%, not more than that. Yeah, well, but at least it's something. Uh, I mean, it, um, I mean it probably petroleum, petroleum companies don't care about the other CO2 because they are not getting any money. Okay, <laughs> okay thank you very much. Sure, pleasure. pleasure. Okay. Um, so we are toward the end of this morning, okay. and so I am asking uh, Pedro Fernandez to give uh, his speech about uh, uh, environmental problems uh, connected to transportation, marine and terrestrial transportation. Il problema è che quello che viene dalle scritte, 
Pedro Fernandez is working at Universidad Politécnica de Madrid, and uh, I think it is uh, involved in many in many research uh, projects dealing with uh, transportation, marine and terrestrial transportation. Buonasera, uh, good morning everybody. I apologize because I, I don't speak uh, English, I don't speak Italian, but I'm uh, fluently and bilingual in global English and in Spanish. And uh, I think the only person that will need a translator will be Alice, but he's not now on the, on the room. Then I hope everybody understands quite well my global English. Then um, I will start with um, some comments about this morning. Uh, it was a very nice collazione, <laughs> collazione. <laughs> and I, I, I met uh, very interesting people in the collazione. It's a couple about a couple of Russian and uh, a Mexican, mix, uh, Russian Mexican couple living in Washington, traveling around the world. Please remind me this because I want I connected with some things that I I hear in this in this uh, presentation, in this uh, in this morning. Uh, this this will remind you of no, the no, please. Oh. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, when uh, uh, Luigi and uh, oh, you need this, not that. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, ask me uh, uh, to talk about terrestrial and marine sustainability mobility. Uh, first, uh, uh, I think about. Uh, there is, uh, to clarify, there is a uh, mm, technical, uh, or the technical point of view, there is, uh, even there is concept uh, related, there are different uh, ways of uh, working the specialist. And one thing is the transport and the other thing is the mobility. But we will see that it's uh, very, very well related. Uh, tra mainly transport is to, to pick something and to move to another place. And mobility, could, we could understand the capacity or the rate of liberty of some actor to move but we will try to mix all. Um, this work is also, uh, or this thinking is uh, uh, developed by three persons, myself, Pedro Fernandez, and uh, two colleagues from uh, the University of Valparaíso, uh, Professor Sergio Vidal Loyola and Gonzalo Díaz de Valdez. Uh, this, um, well, we de de developed a more, more order and uh, less chaotic uh, presentation in, uh, in the Astra than you can with uh, out of number about transport and, and fuels. Well, think about the main keywords we think first in seaports, maritime transport, development, trading networks, inland logistics area, e-commerce, uh, security, smart cities, SIM card, but we don't know if we, we, we will um, uh, tentate to, to change the name to SIM card, uh, but we'll talk about that, globalization in, in general. Well, mainly the presentation will be with a, a, sm well, a small introduction because I thought, I think that uh, uh, when we talk about uh, transport, we are talking about um, many figures, many, many, many studies uh, around the world, and uh, maybe not all the audience is uh, familiar with that. And I want to focus a little bit and then directly go to the other uh, three points that uh, I think is the, the, the key points. Well, a small introduction. Uh, First, the quadrilateral world line of transport inequality. Second, the network of small city, uh, smart cities and inland logistics area. Robin, I think, is fit very well in these uh, uh, smart cities, and it's, I think it's in, in the way. Thank you for like a uh, person like uh, we have around. And uh, new concept, please, this is a has a copyright. It's a uh, uh, move more, transport less. That is a new new concept. Copyright, Pedro Fernandez, Sergio, and Gonzalo. From, uh, from Chile, and, and some conclusion that this I think is the, the important and is uh, to think about. Well, um, I picked some figures from uh, some professors and some colleagues, and uh, as, as, w as we start, we start with uh, harbor, with ports. We put in the center the ports, and we will see why. 
and also we have a, this is a very Cartesian and it's very uh, rational uh, thinking of way that I think we have to 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 change. Uh, it's very it's very common and very nice. This is uh, for sure developed by in engineering or physical. It's a Cartesian and uh, imagine for transport, logistic, uh, maritime energy, uh, economy, space, almost everything very very good order. But things that's not always the rational solution is the clever one. This and also they include social and cultural. But notice that it's in the back. I think I have to be in the. Um, going back to the studies numbers, if we if we focus more in in uh, in the point of view of economists, first we have to offer a service. We are now uh, running in the third white paper, 2011-2020. You have a lot of information in the web page related to transport. Then uh, the second is um, infrastructure. There is an amount of investment in infrastructure, but this is very important because the way that we see the future is the way our investment in transport will be, if, and this will be where economy will go, and it's, it is will be where, where we be, or, or someone will be in the future. And third is the budget. Who pay all that, all, all, all this uh, way of thinking? Financial perspective, 2014-2020. Just uh, let me uh, read uh, the long-term vision for transport in Europe 2030-2050. We have to uh, uh, split in passenger and freight. Long distance, travel and intercontinental freights. What is the, uh, at least Europe is looking for, but this is an imagine that the world are thinking. Adequate capacity and improved overall travel experience. Efficiency links between airport and rail. Minimum hassle of personal security screening. What about freight? High global maritime standards, more efficient interland, connection for ports, more vessel and cleaner fuels for shipping. If we go moving down from transport to mobility, intercity, travel and transport, again passenger, seamless multimodal travel, online multimodal info and tickets, multimodal hubs, quality service and enforces passenger rights, near zero quasi this for what? In the freight, paperless logistics. No more paper. Multimodal freight corridors. No barriers to maritime transport. Cleaner tracks on shorter distance. Better interface between long distance and last mile. Well, close to the person. Urban. Urban transport and, and commuting. No fossil mobility. Clean and efficient car. Higher share of public transport. We, we can see in some uh, big commercial areas whether you have a plug-in for uh, this electrical car. For example, alternative propulsion for urban uses and taxis, better infrastructure for walking and cycling. In this uh, event in Ravenna, there are workshops related with uh, cycling. Freight, uh, freight cons consolidation center and del delivery points, because they, we, we move from the big to, to a small, um, a small um, content. Freight consolidation centers and delivery points, ETS for better logistics, low noise, and low emission trucks for delivery. It means quality of life. Well, it is the, the main idea. But go back to the, the, to the ports, the harbors, because I think it's one, uh, one of the key points. This is the idea, of, this is the main harbors and the, the type of harbors. If we want to, 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 to work or to, to, to go to the problem of transport, sustainability, <laughs> we have to know what, how is the cape, one of the key points. There is not two harbor equal, but we have to classify. There is a between cargo weight, influence area, land property, business model, telematic level. Very small port, local port, state port, uh, land property, public port, or a small, medium port, large ports. And uh, the, what is the influence of this port? From uh, local to regional, continental, global. What, who is the owner? Who is the, has the right, not the right, but has who, uh, the, well, the right to, to, to act? You know, this, uh, to, uh, in, this, in these places, a state port, region land port, city port, public private port, fully private port. This is uh, who have to have in mind we are uh, who are dealing with this big port, all, all the port, public, full port, land, land port, private port. The second system is uh, well, we have uh, it's important. This uh, this uh, this the imagine the high uh, I selected this. Uh, New Orleans port, Shanghai port, Durban port, Panama port, New York port, these are big ports. It's a movement of transport across this port. Arrive to Callao, 
some four, four, three poly, alas, for well, this a smaller one for to, to put some example. But another kind is a specialization, geographical, tax policy zone, traffic type, commerce. Then we have a very a map of very different kind of actors in the whole um, business of transport, passenger postal, industrial, military, commercial, and so on. Well, I don't want to bore it too, too much, but I, uh, to bore it too much to you, but I, I would like to focus what is the, the, the world of transport. And then think about, this is, if many people are studying about transport or working in research, like in my university, there are different uh, research groups talking about transport or, or working in transport, even in mobility. They are thinking in this type of, of, uh, of projects supported by the European Union. But there is a reality that is the equatorial world line of transport. There is an inequality. These people, this is a photo taken in Senegal in the way to, from, uh, in the way to San Luis, uh, in the lengua of Barberi. And this is, this is transport. This could be a harbor. This is a logistic area. This is the, the owner, the, the traders, the the hubs and the but how this mercancy how these goods arrive or or how far is from for the equatorial line of transport where is the trans where is the equatorial line of transport we will try to find it where is first look at the at the main transport and the world ports we can uh, measure in tons tails that this is the uh, container the number of containers and profits it's not the same we, you can transport a container, but it could be empty if, because you, you, you uh, rent a, a, a container just to take this water to your lot. Um, well, the first one is Sh Shanghai. It's a volume, 2010, million tons. This is growing up. Uh, 650, uh, 50, 30. And volume of, uh, of a million tails, this uh, number of containers is 20, 29, almost 30. What is the profit in million US dollar? It's, a, it's one, 1,000 million dollars. It's a lot of money, at least for me. I don't know if for you <laughs> it's a quantity that you manage every day. Um, this look at not only the amount of uh, volume, but what is the, this, this, this uh, harbor? Lingo, thousand in China, Singapore, um, and it's, it's all on the, the, on the top, on the top. The, the first European one is Rotterdam, Netherlands, that is focused in the northern, but it's, it's quite uh, on the, it's far from the two, the, the two uh, first one. Even it's moving a, a lot of uh, volume, uh, volume of tons, millions of tons, of tons, millions of tails, and so on. China, 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 South Korea, China, and Dubai, Arab Emirates. World has changed. We will talk about change also. Don't be afraid about change. Change, we are here because we, uh, we are prepared for change, uh, but we talk about later. <laughs> we are looking for the for this uh, uh, equatorial uh, inequality, equatorial line of uh, of transport. This is a some of example of, of many uh, economical uh, graphics of maps of the transport of the area. All are, are in the north. The equatorial line is le is down a lot of kilometers. The rest is out of this line. The communication is crossing in front of us. The, this equatorial uh, line of transport crossed the Mediterranean. It's, it's very far from the from the equatorial line of geographical equatorial line that Professor show so nice in this global uh, reconstruction. Don't don't think about figures. Just uh, take this uh, this uh, map or these figures because there is movement and it is uh, two thousand. Uh, I think. It's uh, tells, uh, 2008, but the, the big the big thing is Africa and Latin America doesn't appear. Come on, come on. This, we have we have done something very 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 wrong in our development transport uh, policy. The same, the pole of uh, research, development, distribution, consumer are focused in the north. Of course, there is a new uh, area uh, growing up like. Uh, um, uh, Brazil and uh, of course uh, uh, South Africa, but everything is happening in the north. 
going back uh, how we manage the the, the harbor and uh, how is the politic politics going on in our in our days mm -hmm. there is this, uh, a, a very depressed in the in the way of the south uh, mediterranean countries and there is a could be a connection and how we manage the harbor there is a uh, three types mainly Hanseatic port and Denmark Norway Sweden Baltic Baltic North municipality port and city work together to promote local economic economic growth could be the sustainable way Anglo-Saxon is private private fully private or almost fully private ownership controls the port management to maximize the profits that means economy is in the in the in the in the mind and the south we have a strong central government that try to, to solve everything and maybe sometimes or many times don't solve anything. Uh, Ports belongs to the national government with a central development plan. This will be the, the, the oldest one. Of course, we have put port in the center, but we can move the, as, as, as you a career or as your interest, move the center to environmental energy, land planning, regional energy, spatial statistics modeling, space, safe security, etc. It's a very complex, complex um, subject that needs people from every, every um, type of um, knowledge. Another uh, important thing is where we are going or where we are. We are in a, in a um, corridor, we are creating corridors in our, in our uh, world. If we are out of the corridor, you have compete with a very diff uh, with a no justice uh, rule with the rest, and then the cities try to to belong to one of these corridors. If you are out of this corridor, your economy, your goods is could be failed in the in the future. And there is new well, the, the main point is escape, poor capital, logistics zone, short sea shipping, motorways of the sea, multimodal corridor, and. Uh, Finally, we are going to this. This is not the underground metro of Madrid where I live, but this is our underground sea transport, and uh, this is Europe, and this is the corridor. That uh, we have to think about where is going the money, where is going our effort to this corridor, and why. The politics are going to, to make this. Is is correct? Is not? We will see. Okay, then uh, I forgot. Um, I forgot that I want to 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 um, to tell thing you something. I forgot the presentation that I think is important. It's um, a track, a trailer. We were, we are thinking a container. A trailer capacity is about twenty-five tons, more or less two con two con containers. Containers. Yeah. Containers. This global English sometimes. Um, Hopper car is a six container, uh, a, um, a plane is 7045 is 12 containers, a barge is uh, 150 containers, a long chain of a train is 1000 containers. But if we move to the sea, a, a Panama containers are 5000 containers. And Mars is now moving well, is, uh, 15,000 containers. Then we have in the in the in the in the harbors like a uh, yes, it's uh, the, the the key points. We are moving a lot of in by the sea, and then we have to distri distribute. But this is this have in mind. We are the, the idea is that the harbor, the capacity of transport has been increasing uh, rapidly. We have the capacity to transport a lot in in a. In principle, in a ship way, as we will see that it's not so cheap. Well, the idea is move more, transport less. The before idea was more, uh, uh, move less, transport more. The, this is because I bring this, this because the, the ship has growing, growing, and the, and the harbor also. This is the way of the transport ideas. We, want, we would like to change a little bit, or at least think about that. If we, if we, we are able to still transport more, more, and more, and wh what is the limit, and, the, and if it is, is the, the correct way. Could be the rational way, but not the clever way. We are in new contest. Well, always we are in new contest. 
are the unbalanced growing area of influence in different sites of the world is the e-commerce real-time data from SIM card. We are located, I don't have my, my phone here, but uh, we are located with movement are uh, following around the world every, everything that we do. And this is a big information that big companies have. You are now targeted by who knows, <laughs> and you, and you, and you. I, uh, and then this is a big information that is in the big companies and that can use for many, many, many uh, different uh, objectives. But the thing is this change where the goods will, will go, in, where the economy will go. There is a, uh, many examples, for example, uh, in IT, last earthquake, this was used to, to target where the people move because they're, they're, uh, where the people move in the earthquake because it's, it's, it's a, um, a steamy event but it was more, more uh, uh, efficient to take the data of the, this SIM card to w follow the track of the people on, the, on this event. This is quite new and where we go, where we buy, wh many things. This is go a new, new thing that we have to go inside the statistic and, and, and other kind of things. Uh, commerce sites, SIM card, consumer mobility and global scale new land logistics area versus all big transport routes. Site and scale of seaports, competences and alliance, source shipping, new security rules that is changing, the loss of permanent gravity center of any harbor. We invest a lot in the harbor, but if, if this harbor hmm. is out of the map that we see uh, before, it's uh, a lot of investment that this was, will be lost. Well, I will, I will read. New revolutionary and unmanageable energy sources make mandatory to think about transport at world scale and mobility at urban scale and the new umbrellas. I'm convinced that we will be in a very uh, in a point of change of the energy source. In a, I think we, we have developed a lot in telecommunication. We are thinking, uh, uh, we are uh, doing things that we cannot imagine. Well, coming back to the cell phone, well, there is a, a quite a big aspect of the energy here. And I know that to say this is, uh, but I'm sure that this will change. What will happen if, if this, uh, this uh, new energy is for free? It's almost for free. It's uh, moving the, all, the, all the, 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 the idea of the, of, the, um, of the transport. And this can happen in uh, five, 10 years. That is more than invest, investment we were thinking about in 2050. Transport sector is offering less traffic tariffs and more efficiency service to maintain the holy economic growth concept. This is a, a concept that is still we have. We have to grow, 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 and grow, but I'm sure that this is not the way. Without a stop to think about if this growth is not only the rational way, but also the clever one. We are making bigger, bigger harbor, bigger uh, transport uh, ship. Okay, but it's not only the about kilometer of zero concept. Maybe you have, have dinner in some this uh, this uh, restaurant that uh, promotes only the the, the foods or the 100 kilometers around. This is a good idea, but it's not 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 only that. It's more than that. More than move more people move more. If you like Chinese or you like uh, Congolese uh, food, go to Congo. Go to Congo. Uh, move move. Yes, it's, 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 Yes, why not? It's uh, interesting even to think, of, of course, if Congolese came here, it's very welcome, but move more, transport less. Why move everything? We have so many information about everything. This apples came in from Chile to Spain, Lorraine's going to, to Chile, and we are crazy, or what? Uh, uh, no, no sense. Uh, I'm working with, with uh, colleagues from Chile, and I'm very happy that Chile is going up at the export. It's a good thing. But it's not only an example. Move more, people move more, transport less. It's a cost, it's not for ship. We, we have the idea, or the idea is that if we make a very big ship, we share all the cost for every one of us when we buy a banana. But it's a cost that we not share. It's a cost that we are making in CO2 and, and, and infrastructure, in our way of life. Move more, transport less. Well, some conclusion. Uh, complexity and change in the international trade have taken a place at a very fast velocity at global scale. Acceleration is the, I think, is the, the not the change, but the acceleration is the key point. We, we see the, the news every, uh, every day. 
since the world map is changing. The time needed to move a good around the world has declined, and the capacity of transport has grown considerably. A ship nowadays can, trans can transport the same amount of cargo that 15 years ago, for 40 ships were needed, and it stays only three days at the harbor in contrast with 12 days needed before. That's a, a big change. The seaport's growth is not enough to adapt to the accelerated rate of growth of the economy, where concepts as logistic chains have to be applied to understand the new relation between peoples, territories, economy, and movement of goods. Also, the relation of different modes of transport have changed in the design of harbor, how the railways are going on to, the, to the harbor, for example. There is not a sustainable harbor without a space to connect with a main railway or with a logistics area inside of, of close by like by like a natural part of the seaport, the, the, the net of the people of the, of the like this, this building, the commercial, the house of commerce of this is necessary for a port, not it's only structure, not it's only ship, it's what is it behind. Well, I translate dry ports because it's, in Spanish is this expression and I just translate, but it's more, it's more like a logistic area. Dry ports have been the new species of the logistic chains and are giving new opportunities to inland areas and also connect harbors that will never be connected by sea, creating new corridors or, or land bridges between harbors. The movement of all this amount of goods effectively in time, safe and control will not be possible without the support of new communication technologies in a world where the, the national train rules are not always easy. We have a lot of information, new information, new way of to have this information that we have to use. World transport trade is not an station, but has its own particularities where still many asymmetries are making difference between the territories and where many considerable changes in the near future will draw new maps and relations with the growing economies. Again, please think about to move more and transport less. For this reason, I'm very happy that you invite me to come here because I'm, <laughs> I'm doing that, uh, the, the thing I'm, I'm telling. Uh, Long-term strategies cannot avoid all these relatives, relatives that have to play with the policy, political uncertainties that are still in the region. This new factor effect like SIM cars, SIM cars, information, new concepts like move more and transport less or expected energy transport, sourcing new technology that for sure will change not only the transport in the whole world and the behavior of all of us. Imagine that you pay five euros to go to Congo, for example, and maybe you would like to de have a dinner there. Yeah. Africa will have an important role to change the transport and the world again. Our economy uh, starts with Africa. We, we don't remember about that. Uh, and, and from Spain, I have, uh, and, and our history is not very clean about that, but not our only. <laughs> Italian, French, English, Dutch, every, uh, also many people. That's our economy started change with Africa, but has to change again with Africa. If you see that that's maps, we are surrounding Africa. We are surrounding Africa for many different. But there, there is now a big investment, and I think the big solution of transport has to be to cooperate with Africa and to put in the in the better level to to participate in the whole transport network. It's one of, of the of the ways. I want to to add some things. That's uh, meanwhile I was. Uh, um, I was uh, hearing the others um, some comments uh, before finish. Uh, Marco, I think it was Marco, tell uh, that that's the two ways. One is uh, that Frederick Nietzsche. Uh, thank you very much for reminding Frederick Nietzsche. I read Frederick Nietzsche when I, ho I have uh, 14 years. I didn't understand anything. <laughs> but the thing I catch is that uh, he never or I thought he never, uh, um, when, when you read, it's not the, the, the thing that you read. He's, uh, he's talking about another thing that you are reading. And when you say the way, uh, the, way that's, uh, the life you have to, to, to repeat, I think the, the, well, who knows who Frederick Nietzsche uh, was thinking. But see, I think it's in the way of um, um, we live like you have to live again your life and then live very well, treat everything well, because you have to pass again for this, for this room. Then I, in, in this moment, I wish you a very nice day and I hope you are very happy, okay? <laughs> um, this one thing. Another thing, uh, 
it's uh, about uh, about the uh, thinking about the change and the 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 is paura paura is uh, yeah. afraid pa yeah. paura yeah. no the paura that I feel when I to 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 um, to presentation about the change and how we present this in many many panels we the the human race have development chance to change we have to adapt to change and to think about that we can we have to move <laughs> move more <laughs> transport less but uh, this was not prepared this uh, it is change we are talking always about change afraid about change this <laughs> uh, but it's our it's in our life it's in our human race it's, uh, it's um, this um well uh, also in some presentation put uh, who has to participate in this uh, in this uh, managing the the global the, this uh, global chain environmental change or the change a uh, scientist politicians uh, yes but we forgot about philosopher psychologist and uh, anthropologist uh, musician teachers uh, for well, just one thing. I just finished anthropology, and for this uh, I add anthropology also. <laughs> and um, and uh, the thing is, uh, this is coming back to the the conversation of this morning. This was this couple that is a global couple. This one is from Saint Petersburg, the other is from uh, Mexico uh, City. Live in Washington in the in, in Pacific. Are traveling around the world, and she is a psychologist. That's and he and he is philosopher. Well, this, is the, this is the this is the way of life that uh, we at least I think is a good, very good example. No? These people has to be on the decision making. Of course, the scientifics, but we are prepared to think rationally, Cartesian way. That is could be the rational way, but not the clever one. And um, well, I pass to the to the acknowledgement, and uh, I would like with another I want something in my my own language. Because we are losing a lot of a lot of power of our culture in our world, and speaking global English or speaking Spanish, is we are losing our culture in in the in the, in the, in the high sense. We are lot losing a lot because the, our discourse is up, is related with our language. If we focus in two or three languages, we are losing many many things. Travel more, transport less. Okay, Luigi, amigo. Amigo. Thank you very much. Because muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. <laughs> because I know, thank you to Marco, that I will be back even if you don't invite me. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much to Andrea Zanfini also, Ravenna people in general. Thank you very much to support this big, big, nice idea that I will let to copy here in Madrid. Um, Humberto Moyano was a professor that uh, spoiled uh, some, uh, some uh, slides not to criticize, just to help me in the presentation. And we develop a, a transport, summer transport in a, in a very nice uh, palace in a summer, summer uh, UPN course. Hope uh, we'll have the opportunity someday to, to, to make Ravenna summer course in UPN. Of course, Sergio Gonzalo from the University uh, Universidad de Valparaíso, Chile. Family, Paola, Lucia, Jaime, Pedro, and little Greta from home. Our families. Yes, just one more <laughs> and all of you of course thank you very much to stay here and uh, please move more transport less okay and uh, uh yeah, no well come on come on i like it <laughs> <laughs> i like it just say uh, i want to i was thinking thank, thanks to paola that she was talking about she's i think is very smart uh, my person clever person about singer and spanish singer but i was i was when i was in a uh, in the audience, uh, remind not uh, our loved Julio Iglesias, but uh, Julio Iglesias. Iglesias. <laughs> I was talking about that. And uh, sorry, Luis was also focusing the yes, okay. And um, and uh, it's, uh, he said, he says, I think it's Silvio Rodriguez, a Cuban a Cuban singer, that's this fantastic poet. He said that something like, um, well, in Spanish, uh, in English, could be translated in global English. It is, this is not more than a song, but I would like this. This will be a declaration of love. In español suena mucho mejor. In Spanish, I think it sounds much better. It is, um, esto es solo una canción. Me gustaría que fuese una declaración de amor. Well, copy to Silvio Rodríguez, is a musician. This is only a PPT presentation, but I would like this will be a declaration of love to environmental and to the people of all of you. Please, move more, transport less. Thank you very much.
Muchas gracias, Pedro. We appreciate it very much your analysis, which is, is not only practical point, but also strategic view. Yeah. Yes, a strategic view. So, so we are at the end of the presentation of the morning. Uh, we now have an interruption for lunch, and we will be back here, I think, around 3 o'clock. Okay? Okay.